All right, guys, this is my outdoor wood furnace. And the make of it is a wood master. This is my pile of wood here. So these two compartments here were just about full. By the end of the season, they'll be just about completely gone. So it burns a lot of wood. Okay, you see the temperature is uh, 176 degree Fahrenheit. When it goes down to 160 degree Fahrenheit, the blower kicks in. Okay, so the blower is in there, and there's a there's a rubber flap here with a magnet. So once the temperature reaches 160 degree Fahrenheit, the electric magnet kicks in. It lifts the, the rubber flap so the air can go in, and at the same time, the blower kicks in and it and it blows on the embers and the fire restarts and once the it reaches 180 degree Fahrenheit the blower stops so the the power cuts off to the electric magnet so the rubber flap goes back down so the air cannot go in the furnace anymore and at the same time the electric blower stops and once again once the temperature of the water goes back down to 160 degree Fahrenheit, the cycle starts all over again. Okay, this is behind the furnace here. Okay, so this is behind my outdoor wood furnace here. This is a uh, circulating pump. It uses very little elect electricity. Okay, so I got hydro coming from my shop up here and then to uh, a box here. And then it goes through the uh, circulating pump. This is just a shut off valve here. So you got two pipes here going through a insulated tube buried underground and it goes into the shop so you got the hot water circulating it circulates through a radiator in the shop and goes back in a tank and it just keeps circulating all the time all the time and this pump here uses very very little hydro And this here is another attachment here, so if I wanted to, I could put another circulating pump here and provide heat to a different building if I wanted to. And this here is just uh, in the summertime, I can just open this valve here and, uh, and flush out the water from the, the reservoir and I could put uh, fresh water back in it. All I do is I put uh, water, some people put glycol, uh, but all I use is water because I use uh, this furnace all winter so the water never freezes so um, There's no use of wasting my money uh, buying some glycol Okay, now I'm going to show you where the the pipe for the hot water where it goes into the shop Okay, so there's the pipe going into the shop. So the hot water from the boiler goes here. And it goes through a radiator. You see the radiator here? Okay, it goes in the radiator and then it goes out the radiator and back into the uh, the boiler. So when the blower blows a hot air, you can feel this pipe here will be a bit colder than this one here. And it's using the blower from this oil furnace. But I have a relay inside the furnace and it controls 
another thermostat which is over here. This is a thermostat for the, the, the outdoor wood furnace and I'll increase the temperature here okay now you hear the blower run so again it uses the, the blower from the oil furnace okay I'm gonna turn the thermostat down okay now it stopped now if I forget to put wood in my outdoor wood furnace the temperature is gonna get pretty cold in the shop and once it reaches 10 degrees Celsius then I got another thermostat here okay the oil furnace is going to kick in you see how I gotta set it right down to 10 degrees Celsius so that's just in case if I forget to put wood in my outdoor wood furnace then the oil furnace kicks in okay and the same blower will blow the heat from the oil into the shop but uh, this camera won't focus come on focus now what happens when the hot air from the oil blows through the radiator don't forget the circulating pump works all the time so it will actually keep the water warm enough in the outdoor wood furnace or the outdoor bowl, uh, boiler whatever you want to call it it will keep it hot enough and will prevent it from freezing actually I've tried it before and it keeps the water at about 60 degree Fahrenheit so this is the reason why I do not use glycol because I'd be wasting my money but not everybody's got an oil furnace backup like that some people just use a radiator without the oil furnace so if they go away for a few days then they need to put glycol in their uh, outdoor wood furnace okay guys you might be wondering is it worth the investment would it be worth it for me to buy an outdoor wood furnace well my answer is it depends um, here I have 112 acres I have a lot of trees there's a lot of trees that are dying and I usually just cut dead trees and this is what I I use to heat my shop is uh, dead trees I make firewood with it I will tell you it's a lot of work making firewood is a lot of work um, I have a John Deere tractor and I skid my trees um, now if you need to buy a tractor to make your firewood to heat your shop obviously it's not worth it the tractor is expensive but I uh, I need a tractor anyway to plow my yard or you know I have 112 acres so to maintain my roads and that uh, uh, you know I need a tractor anyways uh, but you will need a wood splitter unless you hire someone to split your wood which I started doing now uh, since last year uh, just because it's just too much work um, you will burn more firewood in an outdoor wood furnace to heat your home or your shop than you would if you would have a stove in your house because you have your hot water circulating it's buried underground the ground is cold so you you lose heat there even though your your pipe is insulated you still lose heat underground so you got to burn more wood because of that you got a water jacket you got your 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 fire burning chamber chamber and you got a water jacket and you do have insulation around the water jacket but still you are losing heat okay so that's the reason that you do burn more wood but you don't have to uh, get your house dirty you don't have to to bring wood in the house um, so that's one advantage you can have you know rotten wood with ants in it doesn't care everything everything's outside right that's another good thing the other good thing is that you only need to feed wood in it twice a day in the morning and in the evening it doesn't really matter if it's seven o'clock in the morning or, or nine o'clock uh, you know if you wait till even till ten o'clock uh, most likely you're gonna have enough amber here you're just gonna throw your wood and close the door it's gonna restart on its own uh, same thing in the evening if you know if you don't want to come back in the dark when it's eight o'clock uh, you can come here at five in the evening and put wood and you'll be fine till nine o'clock the next day uh, so that's one thing I like about it uh, what I don't like about it is you need to get dressed you need to 
I need to walk all the way here. You see it's pretty far from my house. And um, one of the reasons it's far from my house is that this chimney produces a little bit of smoke all the time. And I don't want to smell that. So that's why it, it's far away from the house. Um, like I said, I do have 112 acres here. I don't have any neighbors. Um, if you have neighbors near you, you might not want to get one of these because it produces smoke all the time and depending if it's windy or if it, the wind direction is blowing towards you, you, you will smell that and it kind of stinks sometimes. Now, do I regret buying this outdoor wood furnace? Uh, I don't know. It, it saves me a lot of money. Uh, yes, it, you know, this thing cost me about uh, almost $10,000, you know, by the time I bought the radiator and, and the piping and, and the furnace, so, but in the long run, yes, it, it saved me a, a substantial amount of money, but by the time you make the firewood and you feed this in the morning, you feed this at night, it, it is so much work. Sometimes I'm wondering, you know, if I should have bothered buying it. Uh, one thing I will tell you uh, is I have a 12 year warranty on this uh, furnace. It's already 10 years old. Uh, after the warranty is over, if it perforates, it's no more good. Um, I don't think I'll buy another one. I'll probably just heat my shop with propane. Um, to be honest with you, I'm getting fed up with, with feeding this thing with wood and, and just doing the, the firewood. Like I said, you, you can hire someone to, to make your firewood for you or, or even buy the firewood and you will still save a little bit of money, you know, uh, not that much, but if you count your amount of work that you put into it, you know, feeding this and cleaning this in the springtime, emptying the water, I, I don't know. Uh, it saved me a lot of money in the last 10 years, but um, yeah, again, the, the amount of work that's in it, sometimes I'm wondering if it was even worth it. Now, if you do want to buy one, if you you know you have a property, you don't have, a, have neighbors, and you think this will be a good investment for you, uh, I will tell you what to watch for. So this here is a Woodmaster furnace. Um, you don't want to buy too small, because if you buy too small, you will have to feed it three, four times a day, and you don't want to do that. Believe me, twice a day is, is enough. Okay, so mine is digital. Some are not, some of them are not digital. Um, I have I've never had any problems with this. But here's what I hate about this furnace. First of all, I got suckered into buying a hogger. Okay, there was a a crank right here in auger, and there's a door here, and the ashes would come down. Well, that's that's a useless piece of crap. Let me tell you. Uh, they charged me 500 bucks for that and it's out of there. So I just put a bolt there to plug it up. Um, I mean the auger would jam up and I mean the, the bar when I was cranking it, you know, the metal was twisting. It was so hard and it, it totally, totally useless. So now I just take a shovel and remove the ash uh, two, three times a year. That's all you need. There's another thing here. You got this, they call it a damper, okay, so when you pull on it, it right now you can't pull on it because it's it, it's jammed there, uh, creosote, okay. But what they say when you pull on it, your, your fire starts faster, that's a gimmick, it doesn't, it doesn't work, there's no difference. Um, I think it's just because they didn't want a copy from another company, I think it's uh, the furnace that's similar to that one is made by Wood Doctor. And I think they just made a couple different things just so they don't copy it, but it's useless gimmick, okay? And this here, you got, right now it's not too bad because it's plugged up with creosote, but when this furnace was new, the air would go into the burning chamber. So once my water temperature would reach 180 degree Fahrenheit, okay, and everything, the blower, everything would shut off, well, a little bit of air was still going through here, Okay, and I would have a lot more smoke coming out of the chimney, so it would stink. Not just that. Okay, my temperature here sometimes would climb up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit when the blower in the shop was not working. 
this is why I got damaged to the door. Everything went too hot. That does not happen anymore because I don't I don't use this anymore. It's plugged up with it's plugged up with creosote, and that's the way I want to keep it. So air doesn't go through that anymore. Another problem I had with air going into the furnace was through the crank here. Like I said, another gimmick. So Woodmaster, stay away from it. I mean, uh, I've endorsed uh, products, good products, good tools. I made a review. If a tool is good, it's good. If it's a piece of junk, I will tell you so. All right, guys, that's it for today. Don't forget to give me the thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.